Morgan Spurlock goes looking for the Force at Comic-Con. Hi, I'm Morgan Spurlock, and I'd like to welcome you to the set of Comic-Con Episode 4, A Fan's Hope. Documentary filmmaker Morgan Spurlock turns his cameras onto a handful of the die-hard fans that flock to the annual Comic-Con convention in San Diego in Comic-Con Episode 4, A Fan's Hope. And Spurlock had an Imperial escort on the red carpet at the film's premiere in Hollywood Wednesday night. How much about Comic-Con did you know before you started getting into this film? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd been to cons before, but I'd never been to San Diego Comic-Con. Like, I'd never been to that kind of massive experience. And so, for me, I didn't really know what to expect. And so when I went there shooting the Simpsons special in 2009, you know, I was convinced. I was like, this is, this is great. This place is a movie. His films, known for their sometimes unflattering looks into American culture, notably 2004's Super Size Me and last year's The Greatest Story Ever Sold, Spurlock's intent while filming during 2010's Comic-Con was not to slime the holy grail of sci-fi fanboydom, but rather showcase it as one of this generation's last great communal experiences. I want to get in already. Was it a little bit hard to get people to sort of come on camera and be a part of it? No, I mean, it was really easy because I think once people, you know, it's, I, I, love the, I love the way you said that, or the way it was painted. It's like every Everybody who's in this fan culture is like, it's our thing. And what you start to realize when you watch this film is it's not just our thing, it's everybody's thing. There's a huge number of people who live and love this same type of world who haven't gotten the chance to be there. There's also a battle against stereotypes taking place in the film. Edited amongst the shots of people dressed as Darth Vader are the stories of five individuals all looking for their own life-changing moment at the convention. And I really, really want to, I want to do this so badly. What it means in terms of careers and what it means in terms of their dreams and their aspirations, that people come to the con with an agenda of becoming something more, bringing something and coming away with more than that. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of real heartache and, and sort of fervent intensity. It's about getting all your friends together and going on a suicide mission. And that's what this is. It's a suicide mission for my future. And who says Comic-Con is the last place anyone could find true love? James and Si Young Darling not only met at Comic-Con... That's where our romance blossomed and I thought it would be the perfect place to uh, pop the question. Adding some celeb factor, famous fans Seth Rogen and Kevin Smith are joined by 89-year-old comic book legend Stan Lee, who's seen the yearly San Diego event mushroom from a small 300-person gathering in 1970 to an annual entertainment destination that hosts over 130,000 fans from around the world. It really is like Woodstock for a large segment of the population. You're absolutely right. It is like Woodstock. But what it is really, it's a demonstration of how pervasive pop culture has become in our civilization because Comic-Con is really, I think, the ultimate expression of pop culture. The thing that gets me is the enthusiasm of the fans. These aren't jaded people who just go because they have a few minutes to spare. These are people who love what they are into and they care about it and what's happened in our culture entertainment has become like a, the biggest thing there are so many tragic things in the world there are so many things to worry about people not only love entertainment but they need entertainment unlike his previous documentary spurlock remains off screen for the entire film opting instead to direct his 28 cameras through all the panels parades photos costumes crowds and camaraderie over the convention's four-day period. I think people will see this film and they'll start to realize, wow, I never realized it. I'm a geek, and it's a good thing. Comic-Con Episode 4 will play in theaters in select cities on the East and West Coast over the next 10 days, and will be available nationwide via video on demand starting Friday. In Hollywood, Scott Edwards, CBSNews.com.